Hi guys, welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to have a look at GNU Gigs. Now, what is GNU Gigs? It's a very different operating system. It's similar to Nix OS. Nix OS is my favorite Linux distribution. Now, where does Nix OS and GNU Gigs differ? GNU Gigs is 100% free and open source software only. There will be no proprietary software available in GNU Gigs. In a perfect world, GNU Gigs will be one of the uh, most popular uh, Linux distributions out there. But we do not live in a perfect world so GNU Geeks is like a very niche operating system that most people don't use so I have a desire to use GNU Geeks on a daily basis on my main computer but it is simply not possible because it won't even boot on my uh, device because of all the proprietary software that is needed for all the proprietary hardware that is present in my computer nevertheless today we are going to have a look at how to install GNU geeks in a virtual machine so first let's go to their website so this is GNU geeks.gnu.org and this is their downloads page they have a uh, different downloads there is a source code here then a GNU geeks binary so this can be used on top of your Linux distribution then they have a QEMU image that is for a QCOW2 virtual machine the kind of virtual machine that we use in virtual machine manager or simply word manager then finally we have the GNU geek system that is the operating system itself the GNU geeks ISO that uh, ISO is what we have downloaded today and we are going to use that in our virtual machine so let's go to word manager this is word manager let's go here let's go to a new uh, create a new machine so local install media let's go forward let's browse let's go to ISO Let's find the Geeks, uh, ISO it's here, Geek system install 1.4.0. Let's select that, choose volume, it did not detect anything. If I type Geeks, it will show something. So let's go with the Geeks latest. Actually, it's 1.4, 1.4 is uh, still not available in the list on Virtual Machine Manager. Let's go forward, again similar routine, let's give it uh, 6 gigs of RAM, 3 CPU cores, let's go forward storage let's go to custom storage in the vms directory create a new uh, new uh, file the latest let's be let or we'll change that gigs 1.4 then uh, let's give i don't know 30 gigs of storage let's finish that so it's allocating the storage now let's choose the volume let's go forward here geeks latest let's change it to geeks 1.4 let's finish and the virtual machine sh should start let's make it full screen so this is the boot menu just one entry there and it's starting it may take a little while and geeks is a very uh, unique distribution like it will take some time to install the software because everything will be compiled from source at least it was the case when i last used it so it's very interesting it has a config file similar to nix os can make all that changes in the in that config file take that config file to a different machine have the same exact operating system that you had in a previous machine that's the advantage of nix os that's why i use nix os and gnu geeks is a very good free and open source alternative completely free and open source alternative to nix os now let's come here for the installation process local language is english let's uh, enter then territory for this language india is available let's select that then graphical install using a terminal based interface so that will be like the n cursors installation means it's not a completely graphical installation but inside the terminal you will get some graphical elements then you also have a shell based process which is a complete tty process where you enter different commands we are not going to do that we are going with the graphical installation so enter then it's asking for the time zone for me the region will be asia and the time zone will be kolkata so let's do k k k k k here is kolkata enter and then the keyboard layout english us will be fine for me then uh, alternate to english and i'll give english international let's do that then a system host name can give whatever you want let's give geeks 1.4 okay then it's uh, checking for internet access it should not be a problem because i have a wired internet then it's asking substitute server discovery so you can uh, disable this or enable this this is just to increase your security let's enable that then it's asking for a password for the root user let's give a password a strong one no need to show that tab to move to ok enter and then again i'll give the password tab 
tab and enter then we have to add one user at least so enter give the name of the user jr real name it takes as jr no problem uh, with that password let's give a strong password then let's go to ok enter it's ask asking to confirm the password then enter now the user has been selected so enter then it's asking for the desktop environment they have a collection here Gnome, XFCE, Mate, Enlightenment, Openbox, Awesome, i3, Rat Poison, Emacs, EXWM. So let's select XFCE. Then let's select the Awesome Window Manager. Let's tab to get to OK. Enter. Then you can now select Networking Services. So if you want OpenSSH, you can enable that. If you want Tor to be installed by default, you can enable that as well. So let's uh, enable all those things. OK. Then if you want the printing service, you can enable it. This is a virtual machine. I'm not going to use the printing service, so I'm not going to enable that. Tab to go to OK. Enter. And then guided using the entire disk. Guided entire disk with encryption. I'll go with the guided using the entire disk. In a, in a physical machine, I'll typically go with the manual installation. So let's go with the guided one. No need for any encryption. Let's select the disk uh, which partition. So since this is a BIOS uh, system, I am not going for GPT. I'm going with the MS-DOS uh, disk label. Then uh, let's enter continue. Everything is in one partition or separate home partition. Everything is in one partition is uh, fine. If you are going to mount your home separately in a different disk, then you will need a separate slash home partition. Otherwise, everything to be in the same partition is fine. So in this uh, virtual machine anyway, there is going to be just one hard disk. Uh, that is also a virtual hard disk. So everything is in one partition is fine. So enter. Then it's telling this will be the layout. So 2096 KB will be in X10 4. Then 2, there is a Linux swap of 1611 MB. And then 30.6 uh, GB uh, space, which will be a bootable partition as well. And it will also be your root partition. So tab to go to OK enter and it is telling we are about to write the configured partition table to the disk and format the partitions listed below data will be lost do you wish to continue yes continue and now it will do the installation process no it is asking for the configuration file we are now ready to proceed with installation a system configuration file has been generated so you, here the information is given about the system configuration file and the configuration file is shown here now you can uh, um, what can you do? You can just go through that. You can also edit this configuration file. But if you are a new user, then you can simply leave it as it is. So whatever we selected in the graphical installer, those will be written here, similar to Nix OS. So if you want to change anything here, you can go ahead and change that. So the configuration file will be in slash etc slash config dot scm. So now I don't want to change anything. So okay, if you want to change, I'll give another tab and I'll go to edit. Now shift tab to come back. Okay. Then now it is starting the installation. So service geeks daemon has been stopped and then it has been started. So this uh, part of the installation will take some time where it will install all the necessary packages. We also selected some desktop environment. So it will take a bit of time. I'm going to pass the video here and I'll join you once this portion of the installation process has been completed. So finally, the installation process has been completed. Now, if I give an enter, it will uh, reboot. So once it reboots, what we are going to do is we are going to go through some basic geeks commands, what the geek system is all about, some basic things we are going to learn and we are going to complete this video. So now we have just one entry, GNU with Linux Libre 6.0.10. So you should note that uh, GNU Geeks runs Linux the Libre kernel. So enter, let's uh, boot into our new system. We will have two desktop environments, actually one window manager, one desktop environment. We will have the XFCE desktop environment and we will have the awesome window manager. So Geeks login, we should have a graphical login manager. Yes, I think it is uh, showing up now. Yes, it is. So let's go here. Let's see what uh, window manager. It's awesome window manager is selected. Let's go with the XFCE session. Let's give the password. And that is plain vanilla XFC. It's ugly as usual. So nothing here. It's not even showing the wallpaper. Yes, the wallpaper has been shown. Now let's change the resolution. Let's go to applications. Uh, let's go to settings. And display should be here somewhere. Uh, it's here. 
and then let's go to the resolution and let's change it 1920 into 1080 apply keep this configuration so let's close this we don't want that message as well now the first command that i want to show is how to install certain packages in geeks how to install any packages in the gnu geeks so let's do that the command is very simple let's make this uh, terminal full screen and let's uh, zoom in a little bit so geeks install name of package so vim will not be installed so let's install vim enter and that should install vim so it will give a warning that you should install by giving geeks package dash u so that you will get a updated version or something just like the same warning that you get when you uh, install packages uh, using in manjaro linux so you can do that or you can simply install it so it will take a bit of time now the installation process it took a lot of time it took almost half an hour so as i already told you it takes a bit of time because it will compile everything from source so see vim is a very small package and it's taking this much time if you install firefox it's going to take a really lot of time actually firefox will not be present in gnu geeks it's 100% libre software only so if you want to use a browser my recommendation for a browser in gnu geeks would be uh, the ice cat browser which is based on firefox so now this is still a uh, 30 percentage remaining here so each and every process is a transaction so i installed vim now that is a transaction so each and every transaction can be rolled back so that's what we are going to see next so it will take a lot of time okay okay it has been completed so let's clear the screen now clear command is not found oh no let's close the terminal i don't know what is the command uh, i'll figure that out later now if i let's zoom in a little bit now we had one transaction so how to know how many transactions that we have made it's geeks space package dash dash list dash generations so now there is a generation one we installed vim that is a generation now if we install another program that will be the next generation so we can just go back to the previous generation for that the command will be geeks package dash dash roll dash back so this will be the command now i am not going to do the roll back you simply enter you are going to go, go back one generation so that is how you will roll back so each process can be rolled back so now you install a package and you get an error or you are not satisfied with what happened to your system simply issue this command geeks package dash dash roll back you go back to the previous transaction you just undo the previous transaction that's really really cool now some other basic commands if you want to remove a package again it's very simple geeks remove and the name of the package if i do vim vim will be removed you can also do search so geeks search i don't know text or something if i do a search it will uh, have a lot of things i can do enter and i can go and see all the packages i don't know if you give text editor so let's queue out of this okay again clear screen is not there so let's close this let's open the terminal again make it full screen control shift plus 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 so geeks uh search text dash editor maybe okay so we will get some text gnome text editor okay so this is how you will search so this is another command that can be used so again file is there okay open terminal okay that's good now this is for individual packages now what about the whole system now we have installed a gnu geek so the how to update so first thing is you have to pull the latest geek so how can you do that geeks geeks and pull p u l l pull so that is pulling the latest geeks so if you are running your system for some time and you have not upgraded then the first thing that you will do is you will do a geeks pull so it's taking a bit of time maybe if it is taking a lot of time i am going to pass the video here and i am going to come back once the process has been completed so that uh, command has been completed that is the geeks pull so that took a lot of time that's one annoying little thing about gnu geeks it takes a lot of time to install stuff and all those things so after setting this what we have to do is we have to run this command hash geek so let's do that 
hash gigs what this does is it uh, in it tells your shell that there is a new gigs version available so after that what we have to do is we have to upgrade so gigs upgrade so there is only one package so it has been upgraded really it will be updated really quickly i think yes it has been completed so the upgrade process has been completed now we have to generate a new configuration so that we will have a new entry inside the grub menu so how do we do that sudo geeks system reconfigure slash etc slash config dot scm so enter let's give our password and is something going on or did i enter my password wrong i don't know with geeks everything is so slow uh, so i let's wait yes it is doing something it is receiving some objects so i my guess is this will this too will take a little bit of time to complete so i'm going to pass the video here and i'm going to join you when once this process has been completed the process has been completed it really took a lot of time actually i since the start of me making this video it's been 2 hours so let's log out let's see if a new entry has been created in the bootloader so log out restart so there should be if we had done everything properly so yes we have gnu with linux libre 6.0.15 and then below that we have gnu system old configuration so if you go there you have one more configuration because we have one configuration when we installed the system and then we generated a new configuration just now so we have just uh, two configurations the uh, the normal one and a old configuration let's go to the old configuration itself so that is it so that's it about this uh, video in uh, gnu geeks it's been a long video for me actually after i edit all these things it will not be that long but it's been like 2 hours since i made this video so that should be one of the disadvantage of using gnu geeks one of the disadvantage which i do not like calling it a disadvantage is it is 100% libre free and open source software means you will not find any proprietary software or any free and open source software that has some part of proprietariness to it to it like a web browser like firefox but the second part that is a disadvantage is really annoying that's the time that it takes to download packages to install etc it takes a seriously a long amount of time even a small package like vim takes like 1 minute or 2 minutes if you start installing a browser then it will take hours to get those things installed but in total gnu geeks is a good uh, concept that's why i use nixos which follows the same concept as gnu geeks but it does things a lot better it also allows for proprietary software in case you need it but if you have the time and if you are able to put up with the long times that it takes to install packages then you can have a look at gnu geeks and it would be really fantastic if you can really boot gnu geeks in your hardware i've tried it in my hardware it doesn't work so that's it for this video thank you for watching if you like this video hit the like button if you have anything to say regarding this video or you want to ask some other doubts you can mention them in the comments if you think that this video will be useful to somebody else you can share this video more importantly don't forget to subscribe to the channel thank you for watching have a nice day